All right, guys. This is part two of finishing up the brakes on the 01 Chevy Blazer four wheel drive 4.3. And, uh, well, we got new parts. Not a sponsor by O'Reilly's, but here she is. Here's the part number of the brake rotor. And, uh, that sucker was about 50 bucks. Yeah, that was kind of nice. Even with a discount, 50 bucks. And then we got what I've been really needing. And I've tried several junkyards since the last time. Uh, Y'all saw the first clip of getting everything taken apart and looking for the ABS wire. Well, here it is. Uh, and here's the part number. I'm not a sponsor, but this is from Advance. So, uh, this was 50 bucks as well. Didn't want to spend it, but things had to be done. Looks like we got everything in here we need. Looks like the same connector, same sensor, a bunch of directions. Now he needs directions. Throw those in the trash. But no, on a serious note, there is some shims, which is what that guy looks like right there. So you can read. You can pause that and read that yourself. But, um, here's the other part. Yes, it just basically tells you uh, everything, what do you need to do to install before you install the new one. So it's covered underneath the warranty. This is a lifetime warranty. Here's the shims. It gives you two. They look like uh, bottle caps off of, actually there's four in here, yeah, four shims. But I don't believe we're going to be needing these because the end of the sensor is actually the same. And what I'm talking about is the end that goes into the hub. you got to make sure that it's actually the same size, which... They are, yeah, you know, the same size. Actually, take that back. No, no, all right. Anyhow, they're the same length. Uh, the only downfall is it does come with this bracket that goes right here, but as far as the other ones. You gotta peel them apart, take them off, put them on the new one, and then put them on the car. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take a brush like this, metal bristles on it, and just go over the area of where the sensor actually sits inside for the hub. Make sure there's no dirt. And stuff like that inside there so it makes a clean seal and fitment. Stick it back through the, the hole. We're supposed to go make sure this ends clean because this is what reads. Just kind of walk it back and forth till it pops right in, just like it did. Put the nut back in it. And we're going to tighten it up. You don't want to go over torque, but make sure it's kind of snug you don't want the vibration with the brakes working this nut back out and it touch and lock up the wheel so uh, next thing you want to do before you do anything else is take the hub and turn it and listen for noise or rubbing anything like that if it's rubbing then it needs those shims that I showed you that came in the kit if it doesn't rub then it's fine just leave it I don't see a problem with that. That sounds fine to me. So, so we'll go ahead and get this put back in where it needs to be. You want to make sure that uh, it 
it's not touching here or in the way. So I don't want, I don't really like how that touches. Actually take, slide this down some. Almost looks like it needs to go this way, but it can't. Go ahead and put the nut on it. So we don't lose that. Take the other ones off of here. As you can see. I guess it went the same way. I guess it, yeah. I guess it did touch. Like I said, I don't really like that. And this one actually has a protective sleeve on it. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and take these pieces off, put them on a new one, and then. All right. So this guy is next, but I cannot install this one here until I do the brake hose. Brake hose, if I'm not mistaken, went on first. Yes, it did. This goes on first, and I can't put this bracket on uh, until this is done. So, as mentioned and showed before, it's like 20 bucks for this hose. Alright, now, here's another thing. The kit for the brake hose does come with these guys, copper washers. But, however, since I am replacing the brake caliper 2, well, it's already got some right here. And before I hook up the hose to the metal line up here, and fluid's going to start going through there and leaking out of here, and I'm losing it the whole time I'm putting the rest of this together, I'm actually going to put the hose onto this caliper first. So that way, number one, it ain't going to leak out. Secondly, It'll seal better if I go ahead and put this together than have it leaking under the hose. Try to put this on here and have it heal, have it seal because I hate these washers. They will leak. So I'm going to do that first. Alright. Take the nut. Put a washer here and a washer here. Make sure you remember how it bended and routed to the caliper. Which, I'll try to do this with both hands. It's not going to be easy, but this caliper is super heavy. Take this guy, and it goes downward, like this, at an angle, and we're going to screw it in, just like that. Alright, so you got the bracket, same location, and the hose just goes straight up to it. This little guy right here is just a uh, washer to keep it from going straight through when you're tightening it down. And that's basically all it is, because if you take it off, you won't be able to, it'll be up and down through the bore. <clears throat> but anyway, go on down, see how I have it, is it routes down, caliper sits like this, routes down, up, and around. This is a 11 millimeter nut that uh, takes this off, so you can replace it. You don't need to go nuts crazy over it when you tighten it down, but it does need to be snug to where it's not going to leak. If it leaks, then you ain't got it tight enough. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all you need. Alright, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and break this loose. You don't want to take this center C-clip out just yet because... It's going to go crazy. You won't be able to get grip on it. The bottom one is a 5 8 that holds it still. I'm using line wrenches so you don't strip them. It's the best bet to use, is my advice, is to use line wrenches. So the bottom one, I'm going to hold it still. Top one is a 9 16 Usually I'll lubricate these a little bit with some penetrating fluid, WD 40 or something like that, but I'm just going to. Get in here and knock it loose. All 
All right, better knock loose. She should spin pretty freely now. Couldn't do it with the camera in the way. Yeah, nice and free now. Get a bucket. Catch the fluid because it's going to start coming out. Make sure your brake reservoir is full because you don't want that sucker going dry. And now we're going to get the C clip out, so get a flathead screwdriver. Just want to get in there and work it back and forth. You got to reuse this clip, so if you break it, you might want to go get a new one. Here she comes. They're a little stubborn. Sometimes they'll go flying. There we go. Just like that. Pretty much the arrows that go up always is the top. The flat edges go at the bottom. Alright, so now, well, it was, there we go. I guess the uh, top part's frozen. We need to fix that right now. It's some good old PB Blaster, not a sponsor. Let that soak in real good. Break that nut loose. Because we can't spin the whole hose when we get the new one on because we've already bolted it to the caliper. Get my wrench, knock it loose. There we go, that pretty much done it. Now it's free. PB Blaster is some awesome stuff. Well, that's not good. There's no brake fluid coming out of that line. Oh boy. Not good. Alright, got the caliper hung up. You don't want it to hang on the brand new hose. Or any hose if you're not replacing it. And it's not bad. So, see that little, I guess, washer you would say? Take this. As you can see the hole has a where it goes up put this in here find out where it locks which somehow seems to be right there I'll take that screw it back in be careful not to uh, strip the line. You don't want to do that. As long as you get it started and you do it by hand, you should be good, which is already in there. Alright, now you got the line tight. You gotta make sure it lines up right. Take this, and like I showed you, push it straight through. It can be of a a little bit of a pain, so ah. don't smash your fingers like I did. Like that. Now it's in its place where it should be. Now I went ahead and plugged the ABS sensor in back into its connector right here. Simple. You want to take the last bracket and put it on, but we got to get this one in its spot. Because this goes first. Okay, real quick, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the rotor on and the caliper and the pads because I can't get the hose on. So, I mean, the uh, yeah, the hose and the uh, ABS wire hooked up right, and the caliper is. Well, being, deal, being difficult, so get a knife, cut this open.
Now, before installing this pretty shiny brand new rotor, each rotor and every rotor, as you can see it's sticky, it comes, and you can see it on my hands, it comes with a sprayed layer on both sides to protect it uh, while it's sitting on the shelf so it doesn't rust. It's called Cosmoline, and you'll need a can of brake cleaner to get it off. Maybe some paper towels to wipe it off dry. Uh, you got to watch out what type of paper towels you use because they'll leave the lint on this right here, and you don't want no dirt, grease, or anything on this part where the brake surface is going to be. So just get some brake cleaner. Don't necessarily need to do it on the box, but pretty much just. Go around here a couple of passes and wipe it off. <clears throat> With the uh, rag. Same way this side. Just like that. Here's a little trick. Take a lug nut, tighten it down so it'll hold it still while you put the brake parts on. Now you want to get your caliper bracket and uh, throw it back on, and it will go on this way. No, wrong. <laughs> it'll go on this way. The boots facing in. Same thing for the bottom one. Screw those in and get them. I mean, very tight. As tight as you can get them. I also forgot to mention, I did throw some Loctite on these. Get this in any parts store. It's by Primatex. Red. And I just put a little bit on the uh, thread so it doesn't back out. Same trick. As I did when I took them off. Take the 18 mil, put it on here, and then hook them together and make one big one. Make sure it's tight because you cannot get a ratchet in here in a socket. I don't have much left of it, but alright, here's the new pad. So on the ears, take some anti seize, this stuff, get it at any part store. It's made my Versaheem. Just put in a little bit on the ears of the pads. All four of them, or all two of them. I've already done the other side of the brakes. Now that you got it on all four, or all two sides, keep staying four. Slot it into its slot. Just like that. So that way when the pads and the calipers moving back and forth, this pad can actually move in and out without sticking or causing brake noise squeal. Alright, next is the uh, brake caliper. You want to make sure the boots pushed in when you slide this in. You don't want to rip the boots. You rip the boots and then that's it. Can be of a pain at a time. Just gotta work it. There we go. Now let's get the bolts. All right. Now on this particular model, the slide pin bolts are made as the bolt all together, and they've already been coated. As you can see, the clear, filmy-looking stuff. It's already been coated. But here is the stuff: slide pin lubrication. Only use this. Don't use grease. Anything else? It's called silicone paste. Get it at Napa, and that's where I've been getting it. It's like five bucks a tube. So, 
I'm gonna put a little bit more on this and then pop them in. So you won't take. I've only put a dab. You don't need much. I've done a lot of breaks with that tube. Just like that. Then take very easily. Pop it in and thread it in. Do this one the same way. Alright, now we're going to do the bottom. I mean the uh, bolts. Tighten them up. You don't need them over torqued. You just need them tight and snug. That's it. And that pretty much does it. As you can see how it moves freely. If you've got a blocking up caliper or brakes or anything like that, check these. I can't say that enough because I've seen it so many times where they're seized in here because somebody didn't lubricate them when they did the brakes last or they got dirt on them when they put it together and it wasn't able to move like this, like it should. The brake is still free. Now, get the brake hose and I've already knocked it in place and it's staying. Now we're going to get this one, put it behind it, hopefully that it goes in there. Which it did. All right, so make sure that everything is tight and snug and leak free, and uh, tighten this ten mil, thirteen mil. There's a there's this nut and then there's a stud on the inside. You gotta hold still with a 13 mil this way or you can go underneath and hold it, which is what I've done. This is a 13 mil that holds this nut on. The bracket goes on the front of it. I tighten the uh, brake line down more. Then up here, you see that stud right here. It's actually got a hole in this frame where it's supposed to go down. And I can't get it to go in there at the moment. You see it's right there. Uh, where the connector is supposed to go but I'm going to turn the wheel side to side make sure that this cord right here cable doesn't stretch too much and then uh, then we'll get on to the bleeding of the brakes all right so now I pumped the brakes a few times pedal is not getting hard like it's supposed to that's got me concerned but it could be because I've not bled the whole system yet which will happen so first of all put this hose on this is going to take the fluid and put it into my reservoir I bought it's a self-used brake fluid reservoir. It's got a handle on it. You can hook it to your compressor and pull this trigger right here like a spray gun. And it will suck the fluid out as soon as you open this bleeder. And uh, it comes in the whole kit. I think it was like 20 bucks on sale at Harbor Freight. And uh, best tool ever to use on bleeding brakes you buy yourself. But I use it. I open that. Pull this trigger open. And it's got a lever on it where you can hold it open all the time. And if you don't have a compressor, which I do, but I don't like using it, especially whenever it gets late and you have neighbors, open this up. Like so. A couple turns. Open this up completely. And then go in there and mash the pedal. Uh, not hard, you know, you don't want to stomp on them because you'll blow this off and then you'll get fluid everywhere and brake fluid eats paint. But pump it and get all the air out of it. Um, and that's basically how I do it. Alright, now after you do that a few times, pump it, make sure you got 
brake fluid, which I do. I've got a whole container. You don't have to get that much, but I've done all four brakes on this thing, so I needed that. Fill it back up if it needs to be, and then uh, the wheel should still turn after you've done all that. Um, if it doesn't, then there's something else wrong, but it should turn freely. That pretty much does it for this repair. Alright, I think that will conclude this video. I hope this really helps out for what you need. Um, any tips or questions, leave them in the bottom. I'll try my best to get to them if you have any trouble. And then, uh, as always, subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Like, share, and um, make sure you have the notification bell on so every time I upload, you get notified, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day or night. Stay tuned for more content like this.